そういったです
that the morphic subclass are only represented one, so the diagrams are very, very compact. You could have made, if you wouldn't have made this, you could have made a similar graph, which would be much, much bigger. In fact, this diagram presents um, two to the power n no, um, terms, and we have here n equal to two, but it will be only, only uh, every time something linear is the number of nodes, which you can easily imagine, we call it um, by the German word usually a sub form <laughs> because it looks like that. So I just want to give you a little bit idea of what happens with CFDs. I don't want to be too precise, but you know, um, um, we, don't, we don't want to have this two diagrams which are isomorphic in some sense, and um, but uh, um, so we really want um, this arrow going there. As you can see there in the last here is a clear use property. And we also don't want that kind of thing, but some of these um, dark arrows, some um, we call this um, trend arrows, to so going to zero because we have some um, implicit assumption uh, in leaving out these um, things. So just as you say some reason they did, but I just want to say it's, um, it's a diagram with some relative uh, properties which are very intuitive. Now I show you the really most important thing how to interpret this diagram. So when we thought about this, there was for some immediate property which we need for a diagram. You should be, be able to read off the term structure. Diagram is no use if it's an arbitrary um, um, convention. I mean, um, for example, if you do this, then you can't read off any structure. But um, and every, every diagram which does not give us a term structure would be not be better than this. So um, we have I have marked here blue arrow, I have here blue and red arrows, the red arrows are um, go to the right and they are um, full and um, these are the red arrows and um, these are the red arrows and you see in this diagram um, highlighted bar which go, begins here as this x goes to the y goes to the z and here and this part corresponds to exactly these variables where um, um, and z arrow um, um, is following. So the x from the x we follow, go with this red arrow. So x occurs from, from y with the blue arrow and from z with this red arrow. So we have x but not y um, and therefore z. X and this part corresponds to x z. So why is there an x? So x not y and oh no, it's not x. Huh? Sorry, I did it. This is that. And now I give you some nice examples that you can get a little more feeling. So we have one to have um, many parts going to a one, and here in this diagram, this represents just the um, sum over all x i. So um, we want just to have this linear passing. So if you have um, just pass, when i one half to the right to the left arrow, then you can then um, you have no other possibilities than this one. And you see, you can do the generates, uh, for example, the um, x2 by going to two times the blue arrow, say on there, then taking the um, right arrow, the left arrow, and going to one. This generates all linear nodes. And now it gets a little bit more um, fancy if you just generate all um, terms which are have degree smaller than equal to, you get something which is of more or less the same, but it has two stages. Here is also something really, really structured, which is um, this graph at the end, and you see virtually that every combination is allowed at least to the one. Yes, yes, because this is an important question. Um, this is somehow about this implicit assumption. So you um, want 
to effect. This bridge has to enumerate in some way all the terms. If you have, for example, if you just would have the one, it was everything should um, occur in this other representation. So you really um, read off exactly these terms, these paths. Um, and so I <coughs> said to you only half of the proof until now. <laughs> we want to read off the terms, but this half of the proof we do in computer algebra, so we can um, monomial orderings, and if we can't read off the terms in the correct ordering, then it gets complicated. And so you the easy example for um, lexicographic ordering and don't look too precise at the graph, just look a little bit as in Get, try to get some feeling and to so just see that um, the um, highlighted path um, walks from right to left and this is just exactly um, the perfect ordering. So we see that it is um, present um, to a novel in the perfect ordering to the green Okay, now of course we have other orderings, but like the pre ordering and in this case, you must uh, think about what you do. But in fact, if you know how to iterate, that's a graph uh, about the polynomial, you just can do it several times and fill out the um, uh, um, terms which do not, not, not make sure to be. Yeah, so, no, 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 it's the same. I, I do the following, I determine the maximum degree. And then I start, then um, take that. Um, um, take, um, give every um, term I find to this maximum degree. Then I say maximum degree is maximum degree minus one, and do the same. And just iterate from the beginning again. It, oh, so you go through the three by degree. Hmm? So you go through the three by degree. Yes, yes, exactly. So and this. Basically, this, this diagram on the, left, on the left, this is the same diagram. And you were just indicating the path x, y, x, z, and y, z, right? No, so the both arrows are also the current term. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe one has to mention that in most cases, you don't have to do the iteration. Because I've written uh, uh, only a few parts of equipment that I've written really needs to access all terms in the right order. Mm -hmm. Still, since we do this really efficiently because um, I say you pass it in every degree the, the thing, but if you really consider it, degree in polynomial computation is usually small. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So um, of course, we can keep everything higher. Yeah. So, um, Yes, we have been artifact in Polymori and we use uh, famous Mary from Martin Altbrecht and we really enjoy the cooperation. And um, we, I present some picture, you have seen some picture by Martin already. So you see we present in um, dense matrices and actually when, when you talk about linear algebra and kernel basis, you talk always about sparsity and so on. But Okay, we started to connect at the, at the, at the end the data is somehow it's a really good supplement because with the CTDs we can um, treat everything which is really, really sparse. And with this matrices we can treat dense things very good and this is just just coincidence very good. By the way, it's of course in good stuff the um the, um dense matrices are really good because they can um, present thirty two or sixty four um things um entries with one word. Um, sorry, wrong, uh, ignore the title for this slide, but um, what I really want to ask, can we say anything about the complexity of um, parameterizing these matrices? And yes, we can. And take some n by n matrix in terms of this computation, and this is not a general matrix, because as you see, you build all these matrices up with the reductors. So in fact, just a few rows will not um, have unique living term. So you take um, 
you, so you take just the number of um, people um, uh, and to fight or leading terms to fight in a set of polynomials and um, what takes difference is these are just maybe a set of um, holes which has, have still to be reduced and call this k and then you can usually say that k is much smaller than n and give some very easy formulas that says the complexity is at most n times n times k and you really see that every um, algorithm which should, should um, calculate this matrix should be better than not be worse than this complexity you just get by using Gauss algorithm. Uh, so I think I'm going to say so just some of the rows don't have a unique leading polynomial. Yes. And I'm not sure what you mean. We need to show the polynomial so it should have a unique leading polynomial. How does a row not have a unique leading polynomial? Oh, no, among this set, in this set, Susanne. So I wanted to say, um, you generate, you have the S products and the reductors, and because the reductor is a very large set, and you just take one for any leading polynomial, to get, get a very diverse set, and see all the pictures are almost in um, triangular for, for echelon form. That's the very beginning, you see it here in this graph. This is what I mean. So when you mean like this, you some columns do not have unique, they can choose. Um, I mean, as yes, I just start with a matrix which is almost in um, O echelon form. Okay. As you see it here. Okay. And um, can, can take that for easy complexity. Um, and this is, and of course, if you look at the picture, um, then you immediately ask, can we exploit the structure? And well, could be. Um, so what we fight with, what we do, we start with some matrix, um, which is already more echelon form, from the sub, sub maximum sub matrix. I show it later in more of a high resolution pictures and and start with some matrix, echelonize it, then we do something like take the rest, do some matrix um, um, multiplication. Because taking this initial matrix, this will help us something like rewriting rules, to the matrix multiplication, which somehow means use these rewriting rules, and at the end we get some very, very dense matrix in some cases, and this we have to echelonize. So, um, yes, um, this matrix is indeed in lower echelon form, we can start, just start with it and um, make it reduce for echelon form out of it. Then uh, we can divide every um, column in the pivot columns by a non pivot by a combination of non pivot columns. In this way we can um, generate this matrix as three writing rules. No, this is sorry. Um, um, sorry. And in this way, we can divide the remaining rows, which I present here. These are most part of the remaining rows, except the parts which don't have to be rewritten. Multiply by the matrix we got from the first step by analyzing. And finally, got the rewritten written um, part, which are mainly the S pulleys, you can see mainly three written S pulleys and um, just be on the left side. And it's in fact a very similar scheme to what we have seen yesterday day by Natcha in Kujer. And I think this is maybe in 2008. Yes. yes. Thank you very much for your attention and may the cookie be with you. <laughs>
something like if you take the, how you want to give some estimate how big are the cities um, originating from this thing. you can easily imagine that you have um, a node which is three words and you have three, three words per, per node and you have this is an absolutely upper bound because this is comp um, compressed and in the structure case it's a big matter but it just gives you the absolute upper bound which is number of terms times degree times number of um, words uh, of um, words per node, which is yes. So that would be very bad, right? Um, well, it's it, it, it would not be very bad because I mean it's cool if it's that and you can do really extreme things in the in the structure case. But um, for instance, if you have 1,000 variables, then it's still very efficient. And 100, also I said that originally it's nice that you can all treat, treat these small examples very well, but I constructed this thing for, for over 128 variables. Let's say if you I have to give some bound where I constructed this for, this was constructed for over 100. 28 variables. Um, just as. In fact, you use it for 128,000 variables. Yes, but, but still, we, um, we can have many examples, even with 20 uh, variables, very much. Uh, very fa we are faster than, uh, much faster than magma and so on. And which you use a data structure, would be, which is for these small examples, much more. Uh, much more uh, suitable, <laughs> so from 20 waves is really nothing, and these examples are no structured and no in <laughs> any way. So, um, it really depends on. Actually, about this dedicated uh, uh, ZED implementation, like there was this Google uh, Summer of Code project proposal, and now actually my understanding is some student actually started working on that, right? Yeah. Can you, can you give, like, so for like somebody like me, like what is the problem with, with the CUDD? Why why do you want to really I want In fact, the, the, the CUDD package has um, has not uh, um, a special domain for SETDs, so this for the DDDs, SETDs, ADDs, several kinds of position diagrams. And those uh, for instance the position diagram manager in actually Utilizes cache for all diagram types and so on. So it has all based some overhead because it can take all kinds of diagrams. But it's not specially tuned for CDDs. So we have a lot of uh, uh, overhead which, is, which we never use. Yes. yes. Good enough up to now. We, we will see if we can this is, uh, a project to see. So the student is now doing it in his free time. So he was not uh, uh, this project was not finished by the time of So it is, but he's doing it in his free time. But of course, I think it will be slower now. Okay. What is the size of such a The size of the CUDD? Yes. Compared to linear algebra, uh, maybe so I can say it's a very small library. Yes. But it is comparable to student very, let's say. It's really nothing we, 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 uh, we included in the polyphor resources that nobody has to install it. So mm -hmm. it is uh, a comp <coughs> compiled thing that just uh, adds, let's say, uh, I think, 100 kilobytes to. 
really small. And actually, as far as I know, Pablo Sumenzi didn't use much time to develop this originally, and it was generally so it should be given a project at least by it. Um, yes. Anyway, it, it's good enough for most purposes, so if I would do it again, then I would do the same again, start with CVD, do a clean interface, and then we get the data by something specific. It's good enough. It's not uh, it's not mandatory to invent uh, something else, but one can fix a few things if one invents it in here. And in fact, if you look at engineering, they have dozens of these libraries, and they have reasons for it. Some don't like reference counting, and want to have smaller diagrams, and some want to store some extra data in the nodes. And you see. In fact, you also want to store some extra data. <laughs> okay, our business secret, sorry. <laughs> yes, just, just think about what we would be suitable with extra data. <laughs> Any more questions?